Welcome to our screencast on the passive voice in German, part one. What is the passive voice? Well, let's look in English first to get it clear. Compare these sentences. My father built our house in 1988. Now, as you'd expect in a normal sentence, there's a subject and there's a verb. And the subject is doing the building. So the father's doing the building. And this is a normal active sentence. And this is what's referred to as active voice. Look now at the second sentence. This time the subject is the house. And the verb was built. Is the house doing the building? No. It was being built. So the action's actually being done to the subject. It's a passive subject. So this is what is called the passive voice. And it occurs when the subject is having the action done to it rather than the usual doing of the subject. Now in English the formation of the um, passive voice is done with a form of the verb to be and a past participle. Let's compare how that in German. In German rather than the verb to be we have the verb werden to become and a past participle. And as you'd expect, the past participle goes to the end of the sentence. Note, the tense of werden determines the tense of the sentence. So if it's in the future, it's the future tense. The present, present tense. Past, past tense, etc. Let's make sure you're familiar still with the forms of the verb werden. Firstly, in the present tense. It's an irregular verb, but most of the forms are regular. So ich werde... Wir werden, ihr werdet, and sie and sie werden. So those forms are all regular. And you might recall the du and er, sie, es forms change slightly. So instead of werdest, as you might expect, it's wirst. And er, sie, es, wird. So make sure that you've got those in your head. Important is to know the imperfect forms. Um, the passive voice is often occurring in this tense. So, how does it go? Ich wurde, du wurdest, er sie es wurdet, no, wurde, Entschuldigung, wir wurden, ihr wurdet, and sie and sie wurden. Okay, not to be confused with würden, which has the umlaut, okay? It's a different thing altogether. That's conditional. Now, in the perfect tense, werden is one of the verbs that takes sein as its auxiliary. So you need to make sure you know the forms of sein. And its normal past participle is geworden. However, in the passive voice, the past participle is simply worden. Okay, and you just need to remember that. So it's a form of sein and worden as the past participle. Let's start looking at some examples now of sentences in the passive voice in German. So first of all, the present tense. Now, what did we have to do? We needed a form of werden in the right tense and a past participle. So, since it's my birthday, we're going to talk about cakes. And we're going to imagine that the cake is that I need for my birthday is being baked right now. So we're going to use the present tense. So we need the as the s form of werden. Wird. And it's being baked today. And then we need our past participle. Gebacken. So der Kuchen wird heute gebacken. The cake is being baked today. Passive voice. It's not said who is baking the cake, simply that it's being baked. That's the important part. Now what happens if the cake was actually already baked yesterday? And we wanted to say that in the imperfect tense. We still need a form of werden, but this time it needs to be in the imperfect tense. So, der Kuchen, wurde, and again we still need our past participle, gebacken. 
and the tense of Verden changes to reflect the tense that we need. So the cake was baked yesterday. Der Kuchen wurde gestern gebacken. Now what about if you wanted to say it in the perfect tense, depending on where it's being used? Same deal, but this time you need the perfect tense of Verden. That past participle, let's put it in first, still goes in the same place. Now the, the perfect form of Verden, remember, is a form of sein, so in this case, ist, and the past participle of Verden, which is worden, and it gets sent right to the end. So, der Kuchen ist am Mittwoch gebacken worden. Okay, so the past participle of Verden goes right to the end and its form of sein at the beginning. But wait, no, the cake actually hasn't been baked yet. So we need to say that the cake will be baked tomorrow. So future tense. So we need the future tense of werden. And this gets a little bit confusing because future tense uses werden as well. So we need the form of werden, wird, morgen, the past participle is part of the passive. And what else goes with the future? The infinitive. What was the verb? Werden. So, werden goes at the end. Der Kuchen wird morgen gebacken werden. So the cake will be baked tomorrow. But maybe I'm not happy with that happening tomorrow. I really want it today. So I'm going to say the cake must be baked today. So we're going to try the passive with the modal this time. So must is muss. And as usual for the passive, we need to put in our past participle, gebacken. And what happens with modals? The other verb gets sent to the end in the infinitive. And what was our verb? Werden. So in the infinitive at the end. Der Kuchen muss heute gebacken werden. The cake must be baked today. So with all of these sentences, we have a form of werden in second position, a past participle of the verb, in this case gebacken, and that form of werden that came first has to be in the right tense and follow the normal rules for that tense. So read back over that again and make sure that's clear. Stay tuned for our next screencast really soon. Viel Glück und viel Spaß!